Welcome back to Ibrox. Full time 4-0 to Rangers against Aberdeen. And what that does mean is that Rangers have successfully navigated this league campaign without defeat. It is a historic season here at Ibrox and you can see exactly what it means to the players as they head off the pitch and up the tunnel to get changed ahead of the trophy presentation. Neil McCann and John Brown are alongside me still. The atmosphere is really cranking. The smoke from outside is billowing inside the stadium. The, the preparations are being made for the presentation. But as far as a final league game, John, it was quite the scoreline at full time. It wasn't about the game today. It was just about picking up this trophy. The boys are going to do it. But we've done it with four goals. We've not conceded. But Alan McGregor again in the second half makes Fantastic. two, three, four incredible uh, 1v1 saves. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we've used numerous superlatives to describe this Rangers team over, over the season, Neil. But when you look at it now, 102 points. They're 25 points ahead of Celtic. 26 clean sheets. I mean, overall, unbeaten in the league. It's phenomenal. It is, and I, I think they've, they've blown the British record, haven't they, for the goals conceded. I, I mean, it's they've... They've demolished the league this year, absolutely demolished uh, the competition. Uh, and it's what we spoke about at halftime before the game. Th this has been a DNA, it's been injected into the side and how they play. And it hasn't really changed, Emma. Uh, they've continued to just chip away at it, become stronger, strengthen the squad with the, with the belief that what they were doing as a coaching staff under Steven Gerrard was right and it was going to bring rewards. It has brought rewards. If you can slightly dampen it a little bit, I think they'll look with envy at the Scottish Cup final, yep. feeling that they should have been there. Um, but for, a, for an achievement to get the title back and the championship back and wrestle it back from Celtic and stop them doing 10 in a row is a monumental achievement. The fans outside, I mean, it's like Ibrox outside probably there. I can only imagine how many fans are outside there. It's an outpouring of joy as John has been brought up a Rangers fan. I might not have been brought up a Rangers fan, but you become one when you pull on that jersey. And uh, I have to say that I, I don't feel part of it because I've not been part of it, but when you've been part of this great club and you see them winning titles, you can't help feel an emotional pull towards it because you've achieved something great for a club like this. You feel, you feel good about that. So to see this Rangers side that are going to celebrate and lift the championship today, I, I can only, well, I know what it feels like. They'll enjoy it, Emma. I was just going to ask you that. What does it feel like to stand on that podium? I mean, I, we see the emotion in a player when they score a goal. We see the emotion of a player lifting a trophy. You two have done it. I mean, what what does it, does it compare to anything? It's a lifetime of hard work because we started out kicking the ball in the back garden to get into play professional football. And the ultimate, I was at Hamilton and Dundee, and I think at Dundee we win our... Forfarshire Cup against Dundee United, you get 20 quid in an envelope, you're on there, you're picking up a trophy, you're going to play Champions League, I know it was a European Cup, it is the best feeling in the world when you have to be disciplined, to look after yourself, you can't go out with your mates, you've got to, I, I feel for the players' wives and girlfriends today that they can't be here, yeah. because it's a family for the boys to achieve what they've done and the record that they've done this season. It's fantastic, and I've got to say, I've just spotted my 84-year-old dad <laughs> at the trot. He's broke in, <laughs> and 10 years ago, he was distraught, and he's able to get over that hoarding and get up there. It's a, it's a, a great day for the, the Rangers family. Let's not forget, 10 years ago was the last time the Rangers lifted the, the top flight league trophy, and here they are again. And Again, we touched on it pre-match, didn't we? But just how much it means to the fans, to the board, to everybody connected with this club because of what's happened in the, the nine years in between all of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wee bit of a, probably been a siege mentality uh, used at the club, certainly amongst the fans, that they would go through the divisions along their way. Um, I think they've enriched a lot of clubs along their way because of the sport that's, that's followed Rangers. Um, and, the, and the money that is, is given to the, the, the grounds and the, and the clubs that they've gone on their travels to do that. And they've worked their way through the divisions. I think there's a great sense of achievement by everyone connected with Rangers, Emma. And you're right to point out the board as well because they've dipped into their coffers. And listen, going against a, a runaway steam train like Celtic Ware, with the financial might that they had, let's not uh, forget that, Celtic could have thrown a lot of money at this, Emma. A lot of money, because for, for a, an achievement of 10 in a row, 
listen, that wouldn't have been done again. You, you see how long it has taken to be nine again after yourselves, John. Um, but if Celtic would have thrown a lot of money at it, it would have been paid back tenfold with the commercial rights. So they didn't do that. I think they took their eye off the ball a little bit, to be honest. Um, they didn't see Rangers coming, but they should have because the, the markers were there last season and they came up short Rangers. This season it was, a, it, was a, it was an upgrade. It was a strength of mentality. The fans not being here, and a lot's been said about that inside the stadium, I absolutely believe has had some sort of effect, certainly on Celtic, but on Rangers, because I think it allowed a lot of players that might have, might have felt pressure with that 10 in a row on their shoulders. They might have not been taking the bravery pass. They might have not been taking the risk pass. They maybe have gone a bit safer, but it allowed people to express themselves. Um, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I always felt that if Rangers could become front runners, they wouldn't be stopped. And that's proven to be the case. So it's a wonderful achievement for everybody, as John says, connected with supporting Rangers today. And also what I would say, Neil, is uh, Rangers recruited the players before pre-season. So they're, they're ready right, this was done, yeah. for the European campaign. So they're ready for the league. We were up and running where Celtic were dilly-dallying, bringing in players that weren't fit to wear the jersey if you look at that they failed or was that the pressure of going for the 10 that just it was too much and rangers dominated well thank you very much for the time being the music is getting cranked up the stage is set on the pitch which is my cue to hand back to our commentary team of kevin thompson and clive tilsley to talk us through because 55 is here well they uh Premiership presentation happens exactly 10 years to the day since Davy Weir collected Rangers 54th League Championship trophy. Uh, collect is the optimum word this afternoon. It is going to be a self-service ceremony. <laughs> it's been 69 days in the planning, you know. Title was clinched on March the 7th. It's been celebrated long into many a night since then. And you will see scenes of heartfelt celebration in the next few minutes but only when you are back here at Ibrox can the party truly start it's the bond between the players and the fans which John has been talking so passionately about this afternoon that makes football what it is that makes football clubs like this one if there is another club like this one what they are none of these players have waited 10 years, none of them. Stephen Gerrard has, not for a Scottish title. You are the ones. You are the ones that have been waiting and worrying and wondering for a decade, wondering but never wavering. Rangers supporters in sickness and in health. Well, the news today is that a cure has been found and it looks like it may well be a lasting cure. First title for 10 years, the first title presentation at Ibrox for 11 years. The crowning took place at Rugby Park in uh, 2011. Tanadice in 2009. Easter Road in 2005. Once the helicopter pilot had been given the right directions. You don't always get to choose when and where the medals are handed out, but this premiership season has been played the way that Rangers have wanted it to start to finish. This is where I proudly tell you that James Tavernier will be the third Englishman to collect the championship trophy on behalf of Rangers Football Club. Terry Butcher, yeah, you all got that one. Three times a title winning captain. But who lifted it in 1990, 1991? Shouldn't be Richard Goff, but he was ill. And Nigel Spatman captained the team in his absence in that famous win over Aberdeen. And hoisted the pot. James Tavernier was born in 1991 in Bradford, Yorkshire. It didn't happen for him at Newcastle, spent most of his career down south in League One, loaned out half a dozen times. Came here with Martin Waghorn six years ago to Championship Rangers. Toiled away as the team took that last giant step back to the top flight. In came Steven Gerrard, made him captain. Hasn't been a smooth upward curve, but this season Tavernier has reinvented fullback play. The uh, 
presentation party, incidentally, will be Chairman Douglas Park, Vice Chairman John Bennett, Douglas Park, one of the three bears that set the reform ball rolling more than six years ago with Dave King. And he will be accompanied by the legend that links no, Rangers no, old and new, John Gregg, MBE. The Douglas Park, John Bennett, and John Gregg. Five times a champion himself, John Gregg. The last three in the 1970s as Rangers captain, honorary president by title. But so much more to this club. Great player, great man, and he'll enjoy this presentation almost as much as he did his first, alongside Baxter and Brand and Edison, and his last with Cooper and Johnston and Jardine. A man for all ages, all seasons. And the great John Gregg. take you through those records, shall I? With some help from Robert Carmichael, who's done a lot of this statistical research on our behalf. The first 100-point haul in Rangers' top flight history. 102 points. 25 more than Celtic. They drew today, by the way. A record lead. Unbeaten in 39, in 38, and 39 league games with the one from last season. That is a new club record. 26 clean sheets, an all-time record for a 38-game season in Scotland. 13 league goals conceded, all-time record for a 38-game season. Four conceded at Ibrox. The uh, post-war top-flight home record. The fourth invincible top-flight season, the second in the modern era. The perfect home record. That hasn't happened since 1904 in Scotland and never in a 19-game home season. Lots and lots and lots of never, ever befores. Kevin Thompson alongside me, just watching on as the staff collect their medals. And you know these guys much, much better than I do. You work with them every day at the training centre. It's been a fantastic balance in the backroom staff, hasn't it? Yeah, I think the manager deserves a lot of credit for that. Listen, you need to bring the right staff in, they need to have the right work ethic, you need to trust them, they need to embed themselves in what this club's all about, the DNA of it, winning, the standards. I cannot say I've been any prouder, Clive. The, the, what I achieved in my career to stand here and be, be part of this, a small, tiny part, to get the privilege to be here alongside you, to stand and watch the boys lift the trophy when there's millions and millions that would love to be here. So. Absolutely delighted for everybody, all the staff, right back to the kit man, to the dinner. I say it all the time, that's what this, this club's all about, it's what makes it special. 28 players have figured in the title campaign. Connor Goldson's played every minute. Ryan Kent's missed only one game. George Edmondson and Leon King played only one game. Everybody gets a coconut. <laughs> Goals have been spread around, four in double figures. Roof 14, Tavernier and Morelos 12, Kent 10 in the league. And it will be that captain has scored 17 goals before Christmas <laughs> from right back, yeah. Two months out through injury, but back for the season finale of a drama in which James Tavernier has been an absolute star. since John Gregg last lifted the trophy in 1978. 17 titles, half a dozen different captains, different nationalities, mainly defenders. Richard Goff was skipper for six title seasons, Terry Butcher three, Davy Weir three, Lorenzo Amoruso two, Barry Ferguson, Fernando Rickson, all following the footsteps or the fingerprints of Young and McCall and Shearer and Caldo, and now the manager. Oh, he deserves a hug. I think they're legal now. How many more medals coming from Stephen Gerrard's Rangers? Well, they're about to receive a reward for a season's excellence, but this trophy is about 10 years, not one. This is the end of an incredible journey. Top of the league for the fourth time in nine seasons, let's not forget. But this season, Rangers are top of the league in which they belong.
this season they are the best team in Scotland, best by a mile. The Scottish Premiership Champion Season 2021, Rangers to win the trophy, our captain, James Tavidia. Get ready, you've been waiting, and here it is. Simply the best, relentless. Number 55 is historic, even by Rangers standards. The most successful football club in Europe will enjoy this success as much as any in their near 150 years. Never in those 150 years has Rangers Football Club had to dig this deep to get back to the top. 55 and counting, it won't end here. And the first Rangers invincible season of the modern era. And it's been built not to be the last. This is where the story of the four teenage boys begins another chapter. 2021 is the year of the untouchables, the undefeated, the record-breaking Rangers champions. Steven Gerrard is a national champion at last, a European champion who wrote his own script in Istanbul 16 years ago, and he's brought his own personality and presence to Glasgow and to management, three years in the job, his first trophy is the trophy, the one he wanted, the one Rangers wanted, and it won't be the last. Some managers are just a, a perfect match for the club. Some managers just seize their moment in time. And Steven Gerrard is some manager. Kevin Thompson, you've been there, lifting trophies, taking home medals. Yeah, I've just been a fan, Clive. Just stood watching them in pride, and you know it's an amazing feeling. I listen to Neil and, and Bomber speak. But the, nothing surpasses it. You know, lifting titles. It's what you work hard for. It's bread and butter. Listen, it's lovely winning cups, and you want to win it all at this club. It's great competing in Europe. It's great playing in the Champions League. But that trophy that the boys have got their hands on at the moment is the is the best thing ever. I cannot tell you how good it is. Listen, we know the fans are not here. Well, see that time you get to walk in front of the fans is just such a special thing, such a special thing. I'm delighted for them all. And I'm actually stood a wee bit emotional to know how long the clubs went. I know we're looking at Douglas walking off there. I know the parks, the boys behind us. I know Graham really well. Sold me many a car in the time. I'm still trying to haggle for him <laughs> for a deal. But I know how much energy and how much investment these guys put in. I know how much the club means to them. And they'll be proud as punch. And it's so important because this is what this club's DNA is about, is winning titles and winning trophies. So. Look over the moon for them, and you can see the lads. They'll remember this day forever, Clive. Well, I first stood alongside uh, Kevin Thompson with a Rangers TV microphone in my hand on August the 9th last year. I've only covered 12 games here. 12 wins, by the way. Can I come back? Yeah. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an education. I've worked on matches in Glasgow for 30 years or more. Been up to watch old firm games. Guys like McCoyst and Sooners are among my best friends in football, but then so is Martin O'Neill. That's the communion of the game we love. We need rivals. Football is nothing without competition, Senor Perez. And I'm still a visitor, still a tourist, but I said something in the very first broadcast before I truly understood just what this club is, just how big the significance of 10 in a row really was. I said that in my view, motivation comes from achieving things, not from stopping others from achieving. I said Celtic's motivation should be the number 10. Rangers should be thinking about and talking about 55, not 10. 55 is the motivation here. Or it was, because tomorrow, that man will start planning for number 56. And that is the way that it has to be. So thank you for having me, particularly the wonderful Tom Miller and the champion next to me, Kevin Thompson. I'll see you all in 11 weeks' time. Stay safe. Be good.
thank you very much to Clive and to Kevin for all of the efforts over the course of the season, not just today, of course. I mean, my goodness, the players are certainly enjoying themselves out there, and quite rightly so, because they have worked so hard for this and deserve every moment that they have out there on the pitch. Before we catch up with Neil and John, I'd just like to run through and say a big thank you to our Trophy Lift partners on behalf of the club. Indigo Communications, Miller Fabrications, CWM, Heart and Hand, Electric Heating Company, Wharton Utilities, RF Global Solutions, AIM Building and Maintenance, JNS Lift and McGee's Bakery. So thank you for your ongoing support and for being the Trophy Lift partners here today. Now Neil, John, just looking at those scenes, there's Alfredo Morelos cracking into quite the smile. He looks like he's thoroughly enjoying himself. Ah, it's been a while, it's there. Lovely to see wee Jimmy getting involved there as well. He's seen a few titles in his time, and you can see how much he means to the group. But yeah, listen, I think Morelos this season has has probably um, influenced the team in a different way. He's, he's, he's become a more rounded player, um, and I think the burden of the goals has been taken off him a little bit, and it's been shared around. But it's nice to see him smiling. It's not often we get to see him, but. <laughs> Jimmy I mean, Bell smiling too. Nah, just, uh, listen, that, that's uh, somebody took a picture of that because that's that's not often you'll see that wee man listen, smiling. Even, we, even when we were doing nine, he never smiled. <laughs> but you know when he's not smiling, he's loving it. And he's loving it. I spoke to him yesterday at the training ground and he couldn't wait for this celebration today. And guys like him, David Lavery, Stevie Walker and the backroom staff that have been here for a number of years is just a great family. We're getting that family back at the club. The manager, what he's done is a sterling job. And for every Rangers fan, this team will go down in history. It certainly will, and, and quite rightly so because of the numbers that they've hit. But they've waited so long to lift this. The club have waited so long for it, but having won it on March the 7th, it has been a wait, hasn't it, to get your hands on the trophy? Yeah, it has, but it'll be nothing sweeter than than lifting it above their head. Uh, James Tavenier said, my, my team, uh, player of the season, and it's so nice for him because uh, a lot of people have questioned James whether he had the minerals, whether he was good enough to captain their side, whether he was strong enough to captain their side to a, a title. And it was great to see him lift the title at the end of the, end of the season <laughs> here at Ibrox. You see the coaches getting involved in rightly so because they've been so influential as a group to, uh, to fine tune how Rangers want to play. John, Stevie, uh, see there, he's, he's clearly been done with a, a bottle of champagne or two there, but I mean, he won't be smelling the freshest later on, <laughs> and probably not looking the freshest, but he'll be feeling great after what a brilliant achievement. And there he is, thanking the ground staff. You know, from the very top to the bottom, isn't that everybody has played their part in this, John, and you know more than anyone what's been going on behind the scenes here yeah. to get Rangers back to winning yeah, top-line well, trophies. We, uh, the directors took control in 2015, when Dave Kang, John Gilligan, Paul Murray, the three Bears, Douglas Park, George Taylor, George Leto, with John Bennett coming in too. And that was the start, it took us a few years to get there, but it's a gradual thing that the team was just destroyed back in uh, 10 years ago after we won that title at Kilmarnock. You lost your Davises, your McGregor, your Yelovichs, all these guys went, and it was a rebuild. It took us a few years, but we're back here. This is the first, and it's a 55th of many more for next year we're expecting. And speaking to the manager, he'll be looking at 56, 57. The next three years we're looking at taking it forward. This isn't a one-off. It's going to build on it next season. Yeah, we're going to be joined by James Tavernier very shortly. I want to know how heavy that trophy is. That's the question I'm going to Very ask. heavy. Uh, yeah, you yep, can tell Very me. heavy. I've actually <laughs> taken one to the side of the face as well when uh, I think it was ammo. Uh, dropped it inside of me. He, he waited all season to get you back. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Don't worry, don't worry. He knows uh, he had to apologise. Um, we won the inaugural uh, season this was given yeah. to us. And I was shocked at how heavy a trophy it was. Managed to lift it another twice after the first one. And it felt really, really nice, Emma. I must admit. You can see that I'm really enjoying it. I love seeing players celebrate winning things. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what level it's at because, as I said, it's been a culmination of real hard work, real effort, grit, determination to get your hands on something that means something so much to them. So even the young Patterson there and Bassey, you know, they haven't played a lot, but I think at times the, the, the mark of how strong this squad was is that when 
when guys were required to step in, they never ever looked out of place. And that's testament to the work that's done on the training field. We spoke about this at the beginning of the season, about how in that team there was McGregor and Davis really who had won top flight trophies. You're now looking at guys like Patterson, young players who have already tasted this level of success. That can only bode well, can't it, for the club? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, going forward next season, the achievements of this season, it's going to be very difficult to, to match the record in the league. But the mark's been set and they know what they've got to achieve and the manager will be pushing them to the limits. And your Patterson's been given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. He's got to go and try and put pressure on Taft to get in there. You know, I mean, I'm fortunate to, to work with guys like you every every week, you know, but I, I saw John Gregg going out onto the pitch there with the trophy. The greatest ever Rangers player. I look up at the stand and see Sandy Jordan's name. He'd have loved today, wouldn't he, Sandy? Absolutely. He's Absolutely. A... And uh, yeah, you can never forget these guys. In the last year that we lost, some great Rangers legends in the past. John Gregg there, with Douglas Park, John Bennett out there. I'm just so happy for them all. Got to remember, John Gregg never stepped foot in the club until the, the back crew were out there, and he's come back, and it's just been fantastic. I was fortunate enough, Emma, to work with John when he was here, John Gregg. What a legend of a man. And uh, Sandy Jarden, two proper stalwarts yeah. in the club. I can see another one that will be celebrated for years to come, coming to join his half, chap. Have you come, chap? <laughs> well, without further ado, we are very, very thankful to be welcoming in the Rangers captain to the studio because, uh, well, he's got his medal round his neck, fresh from lifting that trophy. He's just having a quick word with, with John Brown off screen. But we'll just give our congratulations to him because the light is... All the best. Well done. Anywhere you want. There's your microphone. Let's go. Right, we've got the Rangers captain. I don't know if you can hear me, James, at all, but congratulations. How was that moment for you? Special. Um, you know, it's been a long, long journey for me. Um, long journey for my family. Ups, so many ups and downs. But to top it off with the season that we've had, with the circumstances, you know, all of me just goes to the club and the fans because it's been such a hard time for everybody. But you know, we're putting smiles back back on Rangers uh, fans' faces. You see the support outside. You know, it's for everyone um, to go undefeated all season, to get records. You know, the boys are a credit to themselves. Yeah, I seem to deal. The one question I want is how heavy is that trophy? I'll tell you what, I didn't realise it was that heavy. But well, luckily enough, I've been doing a bit of gym and I managed it. Like you say, though, I mean, the, the way the season's finished, to get this 4-0 win today, go unbeaten. It's just a season you must not have imagined was going to be possible, but how proud are you of each and every player in your team? Oh, I'm so proud. Like, everyone's chipped in with goals all through the season. The subs have been, any, any time that the subs have been asked to, to come and play, you've seen Jermaine come on today, grab a goal. Everyone's been a credit to themselves. and have made everyone proud. You know, we, we set our goal at the start of the season to really go for it, be hungry for it, because we had it. We obviously had a, a good start to the last season and we left off, so we knew the mistakes that we had to improve. We fixed that and just, you know, we didn't look back. And what about your own season? It's been quite remarkable. Uh, it's, I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, I've always... What, what pleases you more, goals or clean sheets? Clean sheets, because we've got a record now. Yeah. We've got a, a record for clean sheets. And uh, to not con uh, to, you know, to be the least for the record for the least amount of goals conceded, yeah. yeah. That's what that's what the records are there for, you know. They assist, people get assists, but records are there and they're always going to be there. You see that you said something in the past about talking about pressure. You know what I'm talking about, and a lot of people give you some criticism for that. They possibly Rangers fans. Maybe wondering about you as a captain, James. How proud do you feel right now that you've just done what you've done this year by stopping Celtic and lifting a trophy above your head and showing that you are capable of being a Rangers great captain? Yeah, I've always, I've always believed in myself. Um, you know, that's why I say there's been lows at times, but I've always stayed strong, always uh, determined to make myself better and being, uh, and being obviously an example for the boys. Um, I've got a great group around us. You know, I've got Dave all, Griggsy, Connor, you know, good leadership boys around us. We all chip in together. 
and obviously we've got the gaffer who sets that high standards and he's, he's implemented that on us this season where we're just absolutely at each other every single day. Tav, I was going to ask you, you've just achieved a remarkable achievement and we've waited 10 years for this. What is captain, known the squad, what is the goal for next season? We've got a taste of it now, we, we, we want more. We want that 56, we, want, we need to obviously do better in the Cups. We, we'll learn from that this season. We want more trophies. We want to get in the Champions League, get in the, uh, in the groups. That's our ambition. And you see the club where it's going, uh, the investments that are coming in, the players that we're bringing in. We, we want to go as big as we can, and that is it. Are you staying? Are you going to stay at the club until you finish football? <laughs> I've got at least another because 10 years. there is not another club in the world oh. better than this football club. No, and we you. need you, because what you've achieved has been unbelievable this season. And we need you to lead that team to further success. No, that, you're not wrong, right? Obviously, when I first came here, Rangers give us that foundation to go play the game that I love. And I'll always be in debt to Rangers, and I'll always give my, my heart to Rangers and run my socks off. And I'll keep continuing doing that. And you also said earlier in the week that you would give me your medal. <laughs> I'll go with that. You have to argue with my kids and my wife. Right. I'm not sure about that. that. <laughs> James, listen, it's been a pleasure watching you this season. Oh, thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Enjoy thank your you. night. Come on! <laughs> your captain, ladies and gentlemen, James Tavernier. Thoroughly deserving to be up there with the great Rangers captains. James, all the best. Enjoy it. James Tavernier, as I say, pleasure to have him in the studio and just an indication there of what it means because we, we've we tried to put it into words for the fans, haven't we? We've tried to, to articulate what this means to this group of players, but then you've just heard it firsthand. It's a, a release of emotion of everything they've worked for all season, the dedication. Emma, Emma can I tell you, guys like Tav that come up here, um, the players and Neil all know the Dutch lads that came in, they fall in love with this club. It's part of their life, and see when they leave, it's a big hole in their life. And I found when I left this football club, you just miss that, but you're always a Rangers fan, you're always going to be that. But your Butchers, Wilkins, all these guys became Rangers fans and were crying going out the building when they had to leave. You know, that's what this club means to so many. And we're looking here, Goldson, Aribo, Kamara, Balogun. I mean, I caught up with Leon Balogun earlier on, and he said even after a season, he couldn't have imagined Rangers would have this big an impact on his life. And here he is, he's committed for another year as well. And I think when you look at the year we've had, and, and the COVID the lockdown, yeah. families are on the bubble, they, 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 they discipline themselves away, you know, in our day, we could release it, we take the family down the beach and go away and see when you're locked in. So, so the discipline of these players and their partners to look after them for the year, 10 months of the, of the year through the season. By the way, did you just say you take your kids to the beach? I want to know what beach you went to, because <laughs> I never had one in Port Glasgow. <laughs> Have you never heard of Jock Wallace, Galen? I ran it a few times, but I'm sure the kids. My <laughs> two-year-old two daughter and my four-year-old daughter and they had to run up and down there. They weren't <laughs> sleeping at night, Neil. I had to sort something out. <laughs> uh, well, insight into where John Bomber-Brown used to go on his holidays with his kids <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon. Um, I know we're going to hear from Jermaine Defoe in a minute, but uh, I'm just going to hold off uh, bringing Jermaine in because I think we're going to be joined by none other than the Rangers manager, Stephen Gerrard. And after getting James Tavernier, the captain's thoughts, I'm very much looking forward to having a, a word with the gaffer because there you can see Alfredo Morelos is on FaceTime or, or one of the other apps talking to his friends and family. But here he is, Stephen Gerrard is with us, fresh from picking up that trophy. Stephen. Stephen, congratulations. I don't know if you can hear me over there, but some of your emotions. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, right. that's all right. Just my, my bad. Some of, my bad. <laughs> sorry. That was the warm up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But some of your emotions just now, Stephen. Unbelievable. Listen, I'm, I'm very proud of the players, first and foremost. They've been absolutely sensational from the first day of pre season. Seem to have come back with a different mentality about them, a different focus. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm delighted for everyone connected to the club. I mean, these guys know more than me. They're educated more than me. This club's been to hell and back. And um, we've managed to get them back on top. But now for me, it's important that we build on that and use it as a launch pad for more. 
that's the thing, you, you always want more, but you've got to have some time to enjoy this one. To finish unbeaten, peak 100 points, I mean, you must just be thrilled with the way it unfolded. Yeah, listen, I, I think there'll be time in the coming days and weeks to really analyse the season and reflect, of course, there will. Some of the numbers the lads have posted this year, clean sheets, the points, uh, individual um, numbers have been sensational, and that's what it's about. But the main thing is to win at this football club. There's a demand, the responsibility to win. Uh, I had that as a player, and that's the reason why I came here. And um, it hasn't always been plain sailing. We've had to suffer, we've had to have some setbacks. But as long as you're using them to learn and grow and use them um, to, to, to your benefit moving forward, you've got to believe you're going to get there. And we've never lost belief. And how satisfying, where does this rank for you, given what you achieved as a, a player? How does it compare achieving a, a league trophy with, as a manager? Listen, it's, it's right up there with some of the best um, achievements I've, I've had in my career. It's different. Um, what I've done as a player's done. Um, it's not about me now as the player, it's about a different journey, a different uh, role. And um, my responsibility is different now. It's to deliver trophies for a different club. This club's gri grabbed me, it's gripped me. I knew it was big, but until you're inside and you feel it, um, it grabs you. And I'm loving every minute of it, but it's not about me, it's about the players. And they deserve all the plaudits because they've been sensational. Stevie, you just said there, has it surprised you coming into Rangers and, and the expectation level? And have you felt that pressure? Neil, I expected the expectation level. I knew the demand here, I knew a draw was a defeat, I knew a defeat was a catastrophe, I knew that, but, and I knew it was a big club, but until you're in and you feel it, and you see the magnitude of the fans, and you listen to the ex-players that have been there and done it, you get more educated, it blows your mind, and it blows you away, and it's certainly done that to me. Well, we soon to tab earlier, uh, Gaffer, about next season, the record, the numbers have stacked up, it's unbelievable this season. Where does it go for next season? Well, look, the, the numbers are very impressive, but you know and I know it's about resetting. It's about enjoying the moment now. Um, let the guys enjoy it for a few weeks and then I'll be back on them. Uh, we'll give them some time to rest and recover mentally and physically. And we'll have more pressure on us next year. The expectation level will change again. But hopefully the experience of this year will put them in good stead to go and defend this for the life and attack the next one with the life. That's what it's about uh, when you... Um, you're at this football club. Has, has there been one special thing that stood out to you? Or is it just about winning? Listen, uh, the first day I walked in, you know, these stands were, were full, seven, eight thousand people. That blew my mind. I didn't expect that. Um, and from that day, I, you know, I had a vision and I promised myself I'm going to do everything in my power to get days like this back. And um, this, it's got to be more now. You know yourself. Yeah. You don't last very long at this club if, if it's just one trophy. So. Myself and the players have got to take responsibility for that to go and deliver more. Is this a, an extra special achievement given what the players have had to sacrifice? Covid, the restrictions, everything that's gone along with it this season. The demands on them have been great, haven't they? Yeah, listen, I think everyone in life in the past 12 months, uh, it's been a challenge, it's been tough. It's been tough for the families. We've made signings and they haven't been, out, been able to see the city, they haven't been able to go out the door. It's been tough for them. But one thing they've done is they've stuck together and we've gave them an environment to spend time and try and make it as enjoyable as we can. But the schedules helped us and give us a focus to go and perform and do well. And um, I, can't, I can't speak highly enough of them individually and collectively. They've been absolutely superb. And just finally, a word on the fans. They've not been able to be in here with the team this season, but they have shown their support in other ways. What, what can you say about how they've backed you this year? Well, look, our club's not and without supporters. The clubs are the main thing. They're bigger than all of us, and especially at this club, especially with what they've been through. And um, the players are well aware of that. We've educated them and we've told them who it's about, who the main people are. And I think the players looking in, uh, the, the fans looking in from afar can be really proud of what the players have given back. And now we've just got to build on that and give the fans more because they deserve it more than any other fans. Well, I know that all the fans are very proud of what you've done, Stephen, what the team have achieved, as are we here. So thank you for, for this season and enjoy the summer. Cheers, thank we'll you. We'll see you next year. Enjoy your night. Stephen Gerrard, the Rangers manager, and uh, well, the reaction's coming in thick and fast, as you can imagine. Everybody wanting to have their say, everybody enjoying it. Alfredo's out there, he's got the bubbly going. There's Nikola Katic as well. What a great sight it is seeing yeah. him back on the Ibrox turf. He'll be hopefully fit and ready to go again for next season. But um, yeah, Morelos is <laughs> certainly enjoying it. That's the fastest he's moved all day. Right, let's get some more reaction then because I know Neil Smith, our reporter, is down there pitch side and I think 
you might be with Jermaine Defoe just now. Jermaine, can you just tell us how much this title success means to you? Oh, man. I try to find the words. It's unbelievable. Um, this is what you play football for as a young kid. This is what you dream of, you know? And to achieve it here at this amazing football club and just be part of history, it's amazing. Dream come true, to be honest. How much does it mean to you to get your hands on that silverware? It's always been a dream from day one. It's always been a dream from day one. So to be blessed, blessed enough to actually achieve it with these unbelievable group of players and people, the manager, the staff, everyone involved, the people at the top, the board, the chairman, the fans. It's just like, you know, days like this, you'll never ever forget it. It's amazing. And of course, the perfect way to, to end the season, a 4 nothing victory and to obviously get on the score sheet. I was always going to score. <laughs> I was itching to get on. I was just itching because I just wanted to get a goal so bad. But of course, yeah, last game of the season, uh, to get a goal and to win like we did. Um, everyone's played their part, all the players. You know, even the lads that didn't come on, lads that hasn't played. Everyone's played their part this year, which is so important. And uh, we've got what we deserve, to be honest. So, so yeah, brilliant. Does the performance today sum up the season, really? Sums just the, the relentless nature you've played? Just relentless, because a lot of times you can sort of like take your foot off the gas and sort of like play the occasion, not the game. Um, but to put a support performance like that, the last game of the season, when the league's already won, it's credit to the boys, credit to everyone involved. It's just that range of standards that we've showed throughout the season. So, yeah, it's brilliant. That's great, Jimmy. Congratulations on a great season. Brilliant. Somebody who's achieved so much in the game like Jermaine Defoe and here he comes to Glasgow Rangers and he's a, a title winner. What, what about the contribution he has made since he's come into the club? Oh, he's been fantastic. You know, you, the goal that he scores today is textbook, experienced international player, but what he gives to the squad with his experience on the training ground, day in, day out, has helped the guys up front with their movement and not just your strikers, your tents, your evils, He'll be chipping in with, with decent wee moves, getting into the box, and uh, the composure that he had for his job, second to none. I think habits, yeah. habits, professionalism. Uh, Stevie was saying there about uh, he wanted to bring the good times back to Rangers, and you, you need to you need to come heavy loaded with that. You need tools to do it, and I think bringing someone like Bo to the club, he wouldn't, have, he might not have impacted it the way Jermaine might have wanted. Um, but when he was asked to do things on the pitch, he did it. But it's behind the scenes, Emma. It's the thing. It's, it's on the pitch and the standards that he would have been bringing to the to the training, uh, how he looks after himself. That's the level you must aspire to because your career should be long. You shouldn't look at it short term. And the wee man's proved that he's still able to bang the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, Jermaine Defoe has certainly enjoyed today, and I know another player who has been right in the thick of the celebrations. It won't surprise you to know that it's Scotty Arfield. He's with you. Scott, incredible scenes here at Ibrox. Just how much are you enjoying that in the, the title celebrations? Ah, oh, amazing, man. This is what this is what it's all about. This is why everybody came through the doors. My journey started here three seasons ago, and we had three seasons and a to deliver what we've done today, so it feels special. We should have done it probably two years ago, but what a feeling. I see you've picked up a, a small injury there in the celebrations. And that, that's, that's what comes with success in it, because it's a trophy that done it, so if it was someday or one of my teammates and we've got a problem, but it's a trophy and that's what I'm after, so it can do that to me every year if it wants. What can you say about this Rangers squad, just the way they've performed this season? Incredible performances, incredible records broken. Just balls of steel, that's all they've got, I think, to do it in a way. The way that we play the game, the influence we've got in the dressing room, the you know, young boys coming in, it's seems seamless. Players coming into the dressing room and coming in to start 11, going out to start 11 and coming in, and it doesn't hamper the performance one bit. I think that's what shows you technicality and, and ta tactically we've been outstanding this year, and it shows why we've all got medals on our neck. You must feel those uh, great foundations to build on now. Superb, superb, that's what you want. We all, we all wanted this day, there's probably two times this season where we fell short of expectations in the two two domestic co competitions, but it was all geared up for us. I mean, you can think your aim, we'll put that right next year, no, no doubt about it, but this is what it was all about. So there's millions of people that should be as happy as us. This comes back where it is. Um, need to deliver once more for Champions League football, and then, and then off we go again. An award for the, the fans watching at home on Rangers TV? Well, we feel your pain that you're not here. Through this whole season, I can only imagine how hard it is. I mean, 
we're lucky in so many ways, but we've been lucky that we can do our job every day through the whole, the whole pandemic with everybody looking after us. So everybody stayed safe. Um, obviously condolences to every family member that we've lost along the way, but the bigger picture was to stay healthy, to stay safe. And hopefully we've delivered that smile on millions of people and we'll hopefully get them back next year to celebrate once again. That's great. Enjoy your night. Cheers, my man. Thank you. Scott Arfield, he does enjoy himself and quite rightly so, all the hard work that's gone in here. And again, another another man who signed for this club, having followed them as a, a youngster and here he is living, living his own dream. I mean, it, it's great to see from Scott Arfield's perspective. But I think when you uh, look back at the recruitment of uh, the players over the, uh, the period, uh, since the manager came in and prior to that that uh, Arfield was flagged up he wasn't got a game at uh, Burnley we knew the qualities of the player he's, he knows the Scottish game you know what you're getting he gives you 100% effort his movement middle to front excellent and it was a no-brainer that uh, we brought that experience in with other ones round about and uh, I think the recruitment for the manager and uh, uh, the scouting department has been fantastic and that's been a big difference for the last season to what Celtic recruited, to what we recruited, and I think that went a long way to winning the league. Scott Arfield was Stephen Gerrard's first ever signing, actually, here, here at Rangers. And, you know, his contribution on the park, although previous seasons haven't necessarily resulted in silverware, the, there was a moment this season, remember he came off the bench against Dundee United, Dundee United yeah, yeah, and he scored, and, and then he played nearly every game thereafter until picking up injuries. He's had a great impact, hasn't he? He, he, he certainly has. Um, when he left Burnley, I mean, he was he was great for Burnley coming up here, and people might have thought, you know, he's he's, he's not a young boy, he's not he's not a saleable asset, but you're bringing know-how, you're bringing an intelligence to the game, you're bringing a flat, calm character that doesn't get flustered under pressure. This place gives you pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Scott has been exceptional this year. You're, you're right, uh, Emma, that was that was a turning point almost, I, I, I believe, not only for Scott, but Rangers um, on occasion could maybe not be firing on all cylinders, maybe would struggle to get that win. But Scott at times provided... Look, look who's in, sorry to drop you, look who's in on Boyd, the celebrations. Uh, how how Coyce hasn't found himself in the middle there, I don't know, but um, uh, I think Scott Arfield because he can't fit in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the Glad problem. you said that, Bob. <laughs> I thought I was eating the pies. He's at the shop. Uh, I think uh, Scotty, Scotty provided a threat that maybe others couldn't, mm -hmm. Emma, and in terms of he would go beyond people. And he was providing good goals. He was providing a threat in behind. It was deepening teams. So on the pitch, he was great. I played with Scott at Falkirk when he was a young kid, when he just broke through there. And he's the exact same way today as he was then and that's testament to his character mm -hmm. and his mother uh, if she is watching Rangers TV today hopefully a big shout out to her that she's proud of her boy because that is a big achievement for him yeah he's a great guy Scott Arfield well let's get some more reaction then and our final interview of the day because uh, well he was banging in the goals today Kimar Roof is with Neil Smith Kimar a fantastic way for Rangers to end the season of course to score two goals uh, a very special occasion for you also yeah of course I managed to get two goals in the last game and and to be invincible. I think that's the main thing. Be invincible, you can go home and you'll be remembered forever now. It's been invincible. Not many people have done it. Um, and a, a special day like this, it's, it's amazing. How pleased are you for all your teammates, of course, the way they've performed this season and to break all these records? Yes, I think that was the key. Our togetherness, um, our, our commitment, our, our drive, determination, all of those fancy words. We've done it all, we've done it, I think. That's the recipe for our success this season. And how much does it mean to you to be able to enjoy this success, enjoy these celebrations out there just now? Yeah, it's massive, but the gaffer says it all the time. It's just the start of the journey. Um, next season we want more. And we just keep building on it, keep building on it. Um, but yeah, it's a good start. Do you see that in this squad and at the club at this moment, this relentless nature just to succeed and to, to ha enjoy even more success? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think we've got the group of players and the staff and the board to to keep driving. We're not going to stand still at all. And if, if we do stand still, it's a, it's a negative. We're doing something wrong. So we just need to keep going. And did you enjoy your two goals today? Yeah, of course. Congratulations, came out You're today's uh, Rangers TV man of the match. Thank you. Cheers. Kimar Roof there got two goals in that 4-0 victory over Aberdeen, which actually almost seems a bit of an afterthought, doesn't it, that there was a game here on today because always focused on, and quite rightly so, is the trophy presentation. Well, we are fast running out of time today, but, you know, if I can just ask your final thoughts on what has been a truly memorable season. You know, we've done a lot of it here on Rangers Television, but 
How would you sum it all up? It's been a it's been an absolute pleasure, Emma. I must admit, been asked to come on here and uh, as an ex player and and give my comments to the the, the team. Um, I thought this could be a strong season. I tipped Rangers at the start. I'm delighted. I remember that you got a bit of stick about I that. Actually, didn't you? Stick, in the mainstream it was, media. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't just through uh, having been a, a, an ex player here and, and enjoying many times. I just felt that this was going to be the year. It was such a, me- a monumental season, and it was going to be either way. Mm-hmm. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure to be asked along, and uh, I might be asked back next year. Yeah, Fingers you never crossed know, if we so play our cards a good right. season, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, Emma. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your company. And John, just you know, obviously with your your role here within the club, you've also watched the club, you know, as a fan as well as a former player. But you know, how would you sum up this season? I think uh, the signings we made pre-season, I just felt really confident that uh, we had the ground running. If we get the points on the board, which we did, uh, it would set us up for a, a great campaign. We put we put the points on the board early, and it put pressure on Celtic to match it, and they couldn't. And it's just been a fantastic experience this season because we've suffered for this is the tenth season, uh, so we've suffered for many years. But this season has just been the performances, not just in the, the league, but the European campaign too, have been sensational. And I think uh, Rangers have won all their credibility back. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time and your comments today, John. Well, that does bring the curtain down on quite a season. Some great players and managers have written their names into the history books here over the years. And this season and today, it all came to a close with Stephen Gerrard, James Tavernier and the rest of the players adding their names to that illustrious list. It has been an absolute pleasure to be with you here on Rangers TV this season. Thank you for having me and uh, enjoy your summer. And as Neil said, we'll hopefully see you next season. Trophies out. The kings of Scotland, I books, baby. Out. Battle fever goes back of the net, top of the league. Book has been taking all bets. Talk to the ref, simply the best. Glorious 55th, uh, glorious 55th. Rangers shoot and score, Celtic shoot and miss. 4 4 4 lads had a dream. Stevie is a G. Watch how they lock down Scotland, then they're gonna go for the Champions League. Yeah. Can you see us now? Let me see you rep your team if you're really proud. No surrender, no time to give up now. When we in Glasgow, we shut the city down. Ooh, there it is. 